Hi there, I'm Jonas from uh, Awesome Map Tools and I want to show you a Cordova project that I worked on recently. It hardly has the name so let's call it Map App for now. It's uh, made with Cordova and uh, Cordova is a um, framework where you can r build an app with JavaScript and then you can um, you can build a, turn it into a native app on Android, iOS, Windows Phone, etc. And I haven't installed the Android Developer Kit on this machine yet, so I'll run it in the browser for now, and I'll record another screencast uh, once I have the SDK installed. So um, it has a map and uh, basic functionality for tracking and saving current position. It uses a bunch of different JavaScript frameworks and libraries. And uh, for the map itself, it's either uh, Mapbox, G Mapbox GLGS or it's uh, Leaflet. Uh, so in this tab, I have the, the Mapbox version, and here I have the Leaflet version. And uh, it's because I started developing it with Leaflet, and then I, I switched to Mapbox. And you can actually switch using this URL parameter up here. Uh, so once you just do that, you've got uh, Leaflet running instead. And you can see down here in this um, box here how the position is constantly changing. So I've got a tool that mocks the position to pretend that we're on the move with the app. And let's start uh, tracking. But first, I just want to change the interval to right now it's 500 milliseconds. Let's change that to 200 milliseconds. And here we go. Um, I press there and it starts tracking the position and it's obviously someone who's run, running very very fast at the moment. Right, let's uh, stop that and open up here. And I show you this panel here looks better on the phone uh, or on a mobile device. Um, so let's give this a um, name, some track some description, save it, and this is saved to local storage within the browser. Right, uh, let's try to, we can just pop over there and then start tracking again. And there you go. Tracking is going on. And um, let's uh, stop it and save that one too. like this and um, since this is um, local storage you can now you see over here it's not there at the moment but if I reload the page it'll be there and we can just show the track like that and it looks a bit better over here with this rendering with the Mapbox GL because it's WebGL rendering, so it looks kind of cool. And of course, you can um, you can delete these as well. I intend to make the map also show when the mobile device is offline. And um, the way it works now is that whether you're using Mapbox GL or you're using a Leaflet, the the base map what you see behind is fetched from uh, various services that provide mapping data. And uh, when you're offline with your mobile device, that's not really very feasible. So the plan is to put the map data on the device in a format which is called MB tiles. And you can actually get that from openmaptiles.org slash downloads. Uh, you can download map tiles from the entire world. and um, if we look at the uh, the code, you can see that there is actually here such a file lying right there under MB tiles, and it's actually an SQL SQL Lite file with a specific data structure. Now the next step is to rewrite part of the uh, Mapbox GLGS library to fetch the data locally from the MB tiles file instead of through an HTTP. HTTP request. So, um, but there's actually a guy who's already done that here on on GitHub. Trevor Powell has um, 
a, he has forked the um, the Mapbox GLJS and changed it a little bit so it reads from a from an mbtiles file. So I'm going to try that out. Now uh, let's have a look at the code. Um, it all starts here in main.js and um, browserify is, is used then to bundle the dependencies together um, and we're using that over here in gulp. Gulp is a task runner and then we've got uh, browserify in here bundling it and uh, there's a bunch of other modules there is uh, Vue.js for front-end there is uh, ESLint for linting the code there is Babel to handle uh, various flavors of JavaScript where mostly the code is written in ES6 which is the latest uh, JavaScript standard and Babel translates that back to to versions with wider support and there's a bunch of classes as well so the app class here is the um, the class that holds it all together basically and it has an instance of a map and uh, other classes such as uh, mock position and position tracker classes and storage and they are for instance here is the position tracker and the storage which takes care of storing the the tracks in local storage and um, so the core functionality is maintained in the in these classes and then uh, Vue.js is used for for uh, UI for user interface functionality wrapped around the classes. Let's have a look at um, at one of the um, the Vue.js um, components here. It's, it's a little bit similar to Angular and React. Um, a, one powerful way of organizing view code is in these so-called single file components. So you've got a, for instance, here at the beginning, you've got a script tag, which contains the the JavaScript. And you've you've got um, a template tag which contains the the markup, and at the bottom you can add style if you like, and um, and the module has no the the uh, the JavaScript module has a component has uh, a data object which of course has two way data binding so when you refer to that data inside your markup it'll be it'll be updated, and you can have methods you can have um, lifecycle hooks and and whatnot. Um, and uh, if you uh, actually, it's it's kind of cool that in uh, in Chrome you can have this um, this uh, plugin that uh, detects your your view development environment, and you can see the different components here, and you can you can inspect the values and and properties of each component uh, in there. So uh, that's all for now. Uh, I'm Jonas, and I'd be happy to help you develop awesome stuff like this. I specialize in map, in in maps. I mean, uh, for instance, a map box, leaflet, open layers, and all things geospatial. Also, data and server side components like GeoServer, etc. So, have a great day. Thanks for watching.